As usual, we're happy to be joined now by former Indians catcher Ron Hasse. Welcome back. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. It's great to be back here. And it's nice to get out of the desert right now, isn't it? It's about 107 in Tucson. <laughs> and uh, when they asked me to come back here, I couldn't wait to get on. Yes. Place. <laughs> At what time do I leave? <laughs> uh, well, the Indians down a run right now as Jason Kipnis leads it off. He doubled and scored in the first. Ron Hassey spent part of his career obviously here for the Indians uh, came up early on in your career with yep. the tribe back in uh, 1978. I don't want to say that too loud. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no choice. <laughs> You're with guys that are older than you at least one. Uh, Ron I talked to so many players over the you know course of my career who have said you know when you get drafted and then you know you develop and then you get called up you in the back of your mind you think this is the big leagues this is where I'm going to spend my whole career and then eventually reality comes along and you end up bouncing around from this organization to that organization. What was it like for you the first time you left the Indians and, and were moved. Well that was yeah in uh, that was in uh, 84 I was uh, traded to the Cubs with uh, Rick Sutcliffe and uh, George Frazier I think it was. Yeah. And um, you know I, it, it was it was uh, you know this is the first place I started out at I got to the big leagues here and uh, you know and it was time for me to move. Uh, they needed to make some uh, uh, trades and uh, I got to the Cubs and then uh, from the Cubs you know I got to, I demanded to be traded because I just signed a three year deal here in Cleveland and they sent you to was, Chicago. Yeah lasted about two months here after that three year deal and uh, <laughs> went to the familiar. Cubs and then over to the Yankees and then uh, to the White Sox and back to the Yankees and the White Sox and then uh, over to Oakland and I was in demand. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> and don't forget Montreal. Oh yeah. Ended up in Montreal. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What a career. So you spanned how many years in the big leagues? Uh, a little over 13, 13 years. 13 years, right? Yeah. Did about seven years of coaching. And you managed in the minor leagues, right? I managed uh, a ball double A and triple A uh, for the uh, uh, Marlins, Miami Marlins. Yeah, I thought that, I, I got to tell you that. <laughs> How tough was it to manage after becoming a player? I mean, did you what, did you have aspirations of managing in the major leagues? Well, yeah, you know, you're always looking to move up, but you know, at, at one point, you know, I, I I was with the Diamondbacks, and I did the expansion draft for them, and then I was a special assistant to the GM, and then I was the field coordinator. So, you know, when I went into managing, I knew exactly what to do with players to try to develop them. Uh, you know, you want to win, but uh, the bottom line is to develop all players and get them to the big league. So, uh, when I started managing, it was a little different uh, than just winning. It was uh, what I was preaching to all of our managers at one time: is get the players in there, get their at bats, and try to get them to improve and uh, move them up uh, the ladder. Yeah it's not, not so much winning at one location you got to get them to right. go to double if they're an A ball your job as a manager is to get them to double A or triple A. Right and then to the big leagues. Francisco Lindor takes a strike. Now you played at one point in your career you played for both Billy Martin right. and Tony La Russa. Right. Wow that's different. What were they like as managers. Any likenesses and, and how um, how much how different were they? Well, I don't think they were really different. But the, one of the things about both of them, they were always ahead of the game. It seemed like uh, during the game, they were always looking for that extra edge, or they were looking for what possibly could happen before it even happened. Uh, I enjoyed playing for both guys. I learned a lot from them. Lindor with a bouncer to second, two down. I mean, the the one thing is, as a kid, I remember watching, and it seemed like. Billy Martin it was more of a sideshow you, you his managerial greatness if you will was sort of lost in all the media nonsense and George Steinbrenner and and Reggie Jackson and all this stuff that was going on off the field right uh, you know the, the thing with Billy was that you know you hope he shows up for the game <laughs> <laughs> and if he does look out and then the lineup is you know be set for you and then uh, after the game you just hope he shows up the next day <laughs> but to manage the game uh, he was one of the best. Here's Michael Brantley with two down on the bases empty RBI single his first time up. That's the thing that most of us amateur managers don't realize is that when you're sitting in the dugout if you're thinking about what's happening now you're already you're already behind. Right. They and bypass trying to stay ahead of the game is probably something that takes a lot really of seasoning. have to do. Yeah. You, know, you guys got one of the best managers in baseball oh yeah, here. Agreed. Agreed there. Yeah, Terry does a, a, a wonderful job, and he is ahead of the game, no question.
great communicator to the uh, players. If uh, you can't play for him, you can't play for anybody. And you know it. him from Tucson. I mean, right. he's, he's been around and he hasn't changed. No, he's the same guy. We first got, I met him in college. Uh, he's been the same guy. His, his golf game has improved. Oh, yeah. Well, not, not recently after he's had the hip and the knee replacement. So are you taking advantage of him in the offseason? Not yet. He, you know, he didn't play all offseason. I didn't even see him in Tucson this year. Uh, I think he was doing no. a lot of rehab and rehab and stayed the here a lot. And the banquet circuit. Yeah. have to get into the World Series. Yeah, so I lost a little income. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> He'll be ready to go with new clubs, mind you, oh, next year. That'd be great. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're visiting with Ron Hassey, former Indians catcher, along those same lines as a manager trying to stay ahead. Catcher, same way, you're, you're, you're trying to stay two, three pitches ahead? Pretty much, you're, you're, yeah. You know, it's, you're so well programmed and all the information that you're getting from the fan scouting and the, the videos and everything. Uh, when you get into a ball game, you know exactly what you're going to do. I mean, it, you know, it's not a guessing game anymore. It's just execution now. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. You just hope the pitcher can execute what you call. And sometimes they don't they, they can't execute it and then you get blamed for it. Well, so, you know. I know, but I mean you put the finger down if they locate it. I mean, that, that's the execution part. Well, right. he hit it hard, but a brain with a nice play at first to end the inning. Ron, great to have you. Well, thank you. This is a lot time. longer than the last time I was here. So nice to see you, man. Well, you had to earn your money tonight. <laughs>